Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 156. Page 156, and today is our lesson number 54. This problem is very similar to the problem that appeared in the older version of the GRE, which appears in this book here, Practicing to Take the GRE General Test, 10th edition. In this book, this problem appears, GRE, this problem appears on page number 291 in this book, page 291. So I would also like you to watch the previous video that I put together. Uh, just type in this tag GRE Math, GRE Math as opposed to Revised GRE. GRE Math, Day 108. Always put down the page number, page 291, 10th edition. I'm going to do this already. I'm going to do this problem as it appeared in the original version first before I do the same exact problem in the new version that you see there. They revised the question just a little bit. They haven't changed anything. They're just playing games. So let's do the problem in its original version first. Here is how it appeared in its original version. We were told that we have a rectangular garden. That's what the problem said. We had a rectangular garden and the length of the rectangle was increased by p percent. We were told that the length of the garden, it's a rectangular garden, its length, its length was increased by p percent and its width was decreased by p percent. That's a percent. That's a very horrible way of writing percent. p percent. And the question was this. In the first column, it says what is the what area of the of the new rectangle if p happens to equal 10 so they want you to compare the area of the new rectangle if p happens to be 10 versus the area of the new rectangle if P happens to equal 20. I'm going to change the marker because this marker is losing ink, it's just dying. So what do we do? Well, the easiest and the simplest way to take care of this problem is to make up a rectangle. Let's make up a rectangle. Let's make up our original rectangle. Our original rectangle, just make it up. And since, since this problem is dealing with the concept of percentage, the easy numbers to deal with would be numbers that are multiple of 100. It's very easy to figure out the percentages when we're dealing with numbers that are multiple of 100. So I'm going to make up a rectangle. Let's pretend it is 100 by 1000. That's a rectangle, 100 by 1000. In the first case, okay, now let me take, take this thing so we can, I can point to things. In the first case, we're going to increase the length by 10% and we're going to reduce the width. You can reduce it and the width is decreased by 10%. So let's do that. So the new rectangle that we get here, the length, the length is increased by 10%. Well length is 1000, 10% of 1000 is 100, so the new length is 1100. And the width is decreased by 10%. Well the width used to be 100, the width used to be 100, if you reduce it by 10% it becomes 90. So that's the, that's the rectangle that we're dealing with. Let's look at what happens here. Here, P happens to equal to 20. So people will automatically assume, well, if it's 20, well, we'll see what happens, okay? So here, the length is length of the rectangle is increased by 20%. Well, it used to be 1,000. It's the same original rectangle that we're talking about. If you increase it by 20%, it becomes 1,200. Because 20% of 1000 is 200, which is the whole point, which is why we plug in 100 and not 60. Just plug in a nice multiple of 100, it's easy to do the percentages. And the width is decreased by 20%. It used to be 100, now it's 80. That's all. So all that they're asking in this question is, 
which quantity is bigger 80 times 1200 or 90 times 1100 we're going to do it out and figure out the answer because I need the room because I need the room I'm going to raise the top part so I can do it this work on the top so the area of this guy is 90 times 1100 the area of this guy is 80 times 1200 and let's see how we do it okay watch what happens you do not need the calculator don't reach for the bloody thing just watch let's divide both columns this is your column A oh for crying out loud this thing is terrible this is your column A this is your column B this is just as terrible Let's divide both columns by 100. If you divide this column by 100, these two zeros drop out. If you divide this column by 100, those two zeros drop out. As long as you do the same thing to both columns, it doesn't change anything. As long as you divide and multiply both columns by the same positive numbers. Don't multiply or divide by negative numbers. Multiplying or dividing by negative number changes the directions of the inequalities. Let's divide again. Let's divide again both columns by 10. If you divide this column by 10, this zero is going to drop out. If you divide this column by 10, this row is going to drop out. So now we are left with 9 times 11, which is 99, and 8 times 12. Well, I know 8 times 2 is 16, carry 1, and 8 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 96. Which one is bigger, 99 or 96? If you can tell me that, you're home free. The answer is A here. Now let's do the problem that they give you in the new version, okay? I'm going to erase all of this thing because we need the room. In the new version of the question, in the new version that, that, that you see in front of you here, we have three rectangles. We have three rectangles. Just excuse me for one second, I'll be right back. Just give me five seconds, I'm still here in the room. Alright, we have three rectangles. We're calling them A, B and C. To which we say, big deal. Here, in this question, as you read it, you should realize that here, the rectangle C is the point of reference. I don't like this marker, it's dying. Why are all the markers all of a sudden dying? So I do not know. I get the rid of them, I throw them in the other room so that I don't keep picking them up. I have a whole bunch of blue, maybe. Maybe one of the blue ones will work. So here, the point of reference is C. Here's our column A, here's our column B. Let's read what it says. It says rectangle A, B, A, B and Z are three rectangles. The length and width of rectangle A are 10% greater than the length and the width of rectangle C. Fine. So we're going to draw our rectangle C, which is our point of reference. Let's draw rectangle C right here. Let's make it 100 by 1000. As you can see right away, it's the exact same problem that we just finished doing. There is no difference. It's just worded differently. That's all. It's worded differently. So this is our point of reference. This guy right here is our point of reference. So in first column, we have, it says the length and the width of rectangle A are 10% greater and 10% less respectively than the length and the width of the rectangle C. So we're going to draw a new rectangle here. The length is going to be 10% greater. 10% greater than 1000 is 1100. 10% less than 100 is 90. And the second column, they go on, They will go on to tell us that it's 20%. It says, and then the next sentence, it says the length and the width of the rectangle B are 20% greater and 20% less, respectively, than the length and the width of the rectangle C. Fine. The length is 20% greater. 20% greater than 1000 is 1200, 20% less than 100 is 80. 
and now we have to figure out the area just like we did before so let's do it one more time if you wish and this time we're just going to do it without actually providing any explanation I'm going to do it right here 90 times 1, 1100 versus 80 times 1200 divide both columns by 100 if you divide both columns by 100 it knocks out these two zeros divide both columns by 10 it's going to knock out this zero 9 times 11 is 99 and 8 times 12 again the same thing 8 times 12 I know that 8 times 2 is 16 6 carry 1 carry 1 and then 8 times 1 is 8 plus 1 is 96 96 versus 99 answer is 8 the reason I was showing you this step here is to, I'm trying to make you, make you understand that do not, just because they give you the calculator does not mean that you have to reach for the bloody thing every 30 seconds. Give it a rest. Don't reach for the calculator. Just do it out. It only takes a few seconds. That's it. The answer is A. We are done. I will see you tomorrow on day number 55 where we'll do the next question on the page problem number five okay well this question by the way when it was given in the original version only 32 percent of the people only 32 percent of the people were able to answer the question uh, almost three-seventh of the people almost uh, 70 percent of people missed it and, and even in a new version I don't think those statistics are going to change much the vast majority of the people will miss this question but as you can see it's quite straightforward don't deal, don't do it in the algebraic way, don't do it in X and Y's and all that crap. Just plug in numbers, just keep it simple. That's the key part here. Make up your own rectangle, don't put here X and Y. That's annoying. Do you understand? Make up some plug in numbers and make up some nice rectangle, plug in some nice number to work with, and the best number to work with when the problem is dealing with percentages, as I've already told you several times, is to plug in numbers that are nice multiples of 100. That's the key part. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.